Hi there, Marcus Hoffmo from the Rhino Recovery Fund. Greetings from Ngorogoro Crater where we're checking on the grant that we gave to the Ngorogoro Crater uh, Conservation Authority together with Frankfurt Zoological Society. A very in impressive rhino recovery success story uh, that, we, that we're supporting in this area. Rhinos were down to just a few individuals in the 1990s and they recovered spectacularly through good protection, law enforcement and the country as a whole standing behind uh, rhino conservation. So one of the issues that we have to deal with uh, in, in the Rhino Recovery Fund's portfolio is to deal with illegal wildlife trade disruption, the fundamental underlying cause of uh, decline of rhinos because of poaching and uh, this is something that they managed to sort out quite uh, uh, correctly here in the Ngorogoro area, allowing the rhinos to have a safe habitat without fences and an open habitat, something we would like to see the Rhino Recovery Fund support more in the future. But back to the IWT issue, uh, this is something that we really need to deal with at various levels and for that reason we have a, a very nice presentation to you from Zama Mube from Wildlife Act today who works in and around Umphalosi Shishlu where currently some of the most rhino poaching is currently taking place. Uh, a serious situation in the reserve that was um, the, 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 the place where white rhinos, southern white rhinos were saved from extinction and now they're facing a similar plight in that particular reserve. So Zama will give us some of the background and nuances of some of the issues related to that. And with no further ado, I'd like to hand over to Zama to give us this great presentation. And thank you to all our donors for supporting the Runner Recovery Fund so that we can put money into projects where runners are being protected and recovered. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Gerard, and I'm the Managing Director for Wildlife Act, a partner which works very closely with WCN through the Runner Recovery Fund. And I'm here with my colleague, Zaman Ngube. Hi everyone, my name is Zaman Ngube and I work for Wildlife Act. Um, uh, we basically here in Volozi Park, which is the oldest park in Africa. And we welcome you and yeah, we're happy to share what we do as Wildlife Act and our partnership with SMVelo and also WCM. Yeah, so, so we, we, we're coming in to you from KwaZulu-Natal, which is on the east coast of South Africa, um, from a park, as Zama mentioned, the oldest park in Africa, Shishliam Falozi Park. And we are with Wildlife Act. Um, just a little bit of context, Wildlife Act is a, a non-profit that focuses on endangered and priority species, and, and really that important interface between species and conservation work and people. And so uh, there is a large community that's based outside Shishliam Falozi Park. And so a lot of the work that we do is really around how to, how to disrupt that, the wildlife crime that exists. Most of the people living outside the park are just here. Uh, they're based here. They've been here forever. And they are just trying to earn a living and, and have a decent level of life. And they're, they're not poachers. Um, and really it's around how do we build that support in these communities so that there's, there's um, just the, those chains of poaching are disrupted. And, and so we just got, wanted to talk to you a little bit about the work that we do here, um, the importance of bringing the community into conservation, into the conservation efforts. Um, Wildlife Act believes very strongly in hands um, on work in field, um, boots on the ground, and that's where our focus is. Um, as Zama mentioned, he heads up our community conservation program. So maybe, Zama, just a little bit more about you and your passion and, and how you got into conservation. Yeah, uh, so Zama is a, a young boy who, who was born next to the park in, uh, in the early years back. Um, and yeah, for me, being in this park, and it's like a historical part piece of me, because uh, my ancestors used to live here, and then we actually moved not far away from the park, from, from, from the beginning of the park. So I'm still living adjacent to the park, and my passion as, 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 a, as a person who grown up around this area, and 
and knowing what what is inside is is valued to me and and my community even though some of us never been in a park before but this is what we're trying mark as hard as we, we could to make sure that the communities that's around in the park know what is happening because for us as people grown up next to the park i think that there is a lot of history that we can talk about uh, the relationship between humans and animals used to be there which now it's becoming more and more less since the fence was there to protect what what we 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 now um appreciate that we we still have um compared to other areas so i think our passion as mark said it's is to educate people and make sure that people are still have that engagement and connection with the, with the with the wildlife mm. and i think the you know from a conservation perspective we see the value in this park this park um is pretty much where what we call the birthplace of rhino the, the white rhino population that's across the entire uh, sort of south southern african region comes from a population in this park where white rhino were nearly extinct there was a small population that remained here in Amphalosi in the south of the park and through intense dedicated conservation efforts um, the population, that population was saved and expanded. So a true conservation success. And even today, the black rhino population in this park is used to establish new populations elsewhere across the, across the region. And, and so we've had this huge level of success. Um, but now again, with the increased poaching over the last decades, immediately that's putting pressure on these populations and we're starting to see the population decline again and so it's really around understanding the drivers of that and and how do we how do we address that um how do we get the 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 people that live outside the park that are that are here um that live their lives here how do we get them to really engage with the park and understand and appreciate these rhino and the amazing animals that they are um, if they've never been to the park themselves um, and I think a large part of that then is, is really building that value for the people outside the park, building the understanding of what happens in the park, career opportunities in the park, and, and building them into that, that, that process. So um, I think, you know, the, as Zama mentioned, the value with the kids, and that's where, that's where it starts. And I think, Zama, your passion with kids has been so important over the years. So maybe just a little bit about that, and then the, 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 the work that we do with kids. Yeah, so what we do, uh, we, we, we go around these protected areas, we go to the schools, we do the school visit and we educate the kids about the importance of having this um, nature or environment around their area. And yeah, we've done that in the last past 10 years and we've been, we've been passionate with it and I'm still pushing with the ambassadors clubs which uh, are the people that are out of school, not doing, uh, maybe not in a university. And what we do, we take them into the game reserve. Uh, that way we, we give them that experience of being in, in that environment and engaging a lot with, 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 the, with the big five. And my passion, because I worked a lot with, with, with rhinos and I've traveled to the different game reserve where the rhinos have been given the new homes. So my passion is to take those uh, young people into the park and we walk with them, we show them uh, tracks and we tell them how, how important these rhinos are in our heritage and also by them being here. Yeah, and just that heritage piece. So, so what is the history with Zulus and Shishlu and Falozi? Yeah, as we all know that um, in Shishlu and Falozi Park, there is a piece of land which is still now untouched which we call it the wilderness area where shaka zulu known to be his hunting area he used to protect these um icon species into that into that land so that's why we call this a birthplace of rhinos if you look down in the south you can see that area now is still untouched and our passion is to make sure that the rhinos because this is their land um they keep growing into 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 the into the point whereby we all as african appreciate what what we have as 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 uh, as our inheritance mm. 
and and Zama Zama talks talks about a story of um, one of the Induna, one of the head her, the, the headmen of the area, and he had a herd of cattle long ago, and he remembers often waking up in the morning and there would be rhino with those cattle in his herd. And it wasn't a, a conflict issue. It was just, oh, the rhino with the cattle again. And it was that mindset then to be able to herd those rhino back to the park again. And so there was always that appreciation for wildlife. And, and what do you think has changed, Zama? Why has why that connection been broken now and we don't see that anymore? Yeah, I think the, the connection, Mark, uh, honestly starts breaking down when the fence were up and people have that feeling that they're not no more belonging into the park and the park is for somebody else as uh, i can quote uh, i recently i was like to take one of the youth from from community where she was just the first time for her to be in a park and she mentioned that uh, from her knowledge is that the park is only for tourists but the the black people can be only in a zoo where they can see animals and that was for me that it touches me a lot as as someone who works with the community and for me i feel like we're not doing much but from 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 that experience i think we can push ourselves more and more to make sure that the engagement from us and the community is growing and we make sure that people are are, are, are knowing or getting back into their roots where they can appreciate the animals because uh, from where I grow up, Mark, there is names that um, uh, have been named by people mm. since the animals were used to come and drink drink water. We have the water place where it's called Upechan. Mm. It's, a, it's a drainage line. It used to be in water and the springs there. Like it's Bejan called, is a black rhino. Yeah, and and still that name exists there. It's called Bejan. We have another name, the other area called Zimpisini. That's where I grew up. There's a big rock where the hyena used to live with, with humans. And there was no much of the conflict. I think that breakage through the years, and it make a lot of different uh, mm. of, of, of um, misunderstanding of the animal, where the animals belong. But mm. actually, if we can go back to the elderly people and speak to them and make sure that they pass that message to the youth and i think we can we can we can win it mm. so i think a large part of the work that we do is creating that pos positive association so as zama mentioned the fence was initially seen as a barrier to keep people out and what we're trying to do now is to switch that around is to make that positive association the fence is there to actually create opportunity for people and we're working with fence small small businesses that that from the community that can help to maintain um, and that's the work that we're doing with Rhino Recovery Fund. We, we're working to highlight the value of the fence from keeping um, potential predators or live, uh, wild animals out from any human wildlife conflict, from damaging of crops or human lives or livestock. And so create that positive association. And so then people are appreciative of the work that's going on here and connected to it. And, and really that creates the value. As Zama, I think we still need to work hard because our passion is to change the mindset of the people and make sure that they appreciate what is belonging to them. And a huge thank from Rano Recovery, Recovery Fund on supporting this, uh, this. And yeah, we really appreciate. We'll keep pushing till there is a change. We are deeply hope, hoping that there will be a change when we you when we work hard as we could with the, with the youth mm. and i think you know every individual that we can change that mindset and bring that connection is a is a victory is a success and i think having that passionate team of people on the ground is crucial um but yeah thanks very much to wc and rhino recovery fund and everybody watching today it's been really good to join you so thank you very much